Okay. <clears throat> it is now two o'clock and 30 seconds. And I would like to welcome you all to this Nordic session. My name is Ulla, I'm from Denmark, I'm the National Inspire Contact Point, and I have the pleasure of being a moderator of this session with my Nordic colleagues. I will say it is a huge pleasure to be able to show you how we cooperate in the Nordic countries. As you see, The Economist has uh, already gotten the supermodel. Fortunately, we don't look like that when we work, but we do have fun. We have until 3.30, and uh, we will do this, that we will have the presentations more or less in a row. Of course, I will ask you after each presentation if you have some clarifying questions. And otherwise, I hope for a debate, a lot of questions, and a lot of responses after the three presentations. So, welcome. This is what I am doing now. So we are ahead and going. And please, we have just two more seats. <laughs> And why did we put together this, uh, this session? Uh, well, of course we want to share our experiences. Inspire is all about sharing, and we want to do that as well. And if we can inspire other communities to, to do what we do, that would be good. And if we can be inspired by you and your reflections, because things are going on in collaboration all over Europe, we would like to hear about that. And then, of course, it's all about having fun. It makes XML and GML so much easier if you have fun. So the presentations. We start with Anders from Sweden, who will speak a little bit about the network. Then we have Lena from Finland, who will speak a bit about cross-border cooperation from a data view. And Jani from Finland will present Knock, knock, we open, and surprisingly, it's about open data. Thank you and goodbye is not now, so don't worry. We are only just starting. Yeah. So, Anders, if you would please take the stand, and I will do as I was told. Yes. Thank you. Uh, as Ola said, uh, I'm Anders Rydén from the National Land Survey of Sweden. Uh, I'm dealing with the uh, National Inspire coordination. And I was given the honor to, to tell you a little bit about how we cooperate among the Nordic countries. I'm sure many of you who have been around here for a while have seen us moving around Like, like a group of people, like a pack, some may say, but as a herd, maybe others say. Um, and I shall try to get you through how, to, oh, thank you. <laughs> how we have, so to say, organized ourselves, what we do when we meet and why we meet. And I hope we'll also give you an insight into how we think this is of great benefit for us. We call it the we call it the Nordic Inspire Network. Uh, now we must not confuse the Nordic Inspire Network when we talk Nordic, because Inspire is is kind of inspiring all of us. And and over the years we have a, quite a, a good network in between the Nordic countries when it comes to INSPIRE. But this little flock moving around now that you have seen or have mentioned, we are a, a, a little group within that network that actually call ourselves the Nordic INSPIRE network. The Nordic INSPIRE network was formed in 2007. And, and it's, it's 
all about the Inspire Directive, and, and, it, and it consists of us who deals with Inspire implementation. Um, originally, this group was not a group, of course, but it was those people who were engaged in the negotiations for the Inspire Directive. They re realized that we meet quite often at this, and, uh, these occasions, and, and we have a lot in common uh, ideas and questions and values. So maybe, yes, to make this a bit more efficient for us, we should meet also in between these meetings in Brussels. Um, so this group decided to create, or this bunch of people decided to create a, a Nordic Inspire network and form a, a, an informal group. And the purpose of that one is to share experience and knowledge, of course, because we realized, or I was not part of that group at that time, but these people realized that being small countries at the, at the fringe of Europe, having, uh, facing the same problems, having the same environment, um, we would benefit from meeting each other and discuss uh, uh, and to get common uh, like standpoints and develop common standpoints against the uh, European Commission. Or not against, that's the wrong word, but actually we wanted to, to clarify for each other, how do you see this one? How do you see it? I see it like this, so we can get a, a, a good, nice picture of what is actually asked from us. The purpose was also to uh, exchange experience, like uh, action plans, because we're all facing the same uh, time schedule with Inspire, more or less, apart from Norway and, and Iceland. I have not told you yet what the Nordic countries are, but there will be a map next one here. <laughs> uh, so that we could keep in pace with each other. And what looks a little bit strange, appoint working groups, because this is a very informal network. We do not have any actual power to, to appoint working groups, but we have an informal influence to, to get things going in our respective organizations. So that's how we started. The first meeting was in 6 of March 2007, and has been going on twice a year ever since. The strength of this group is not that we are, uh, or the strength of this group is that we are not only the implementing agencies. Now it happens to be that the implementing agencies in the Scandinavian countries are all the national mapping and cadastral agencies, uh, which could be a problem when you're talking about implementing Inspire or, uh, or building an infrastructure, because you can't build an infrastructure having the, the, the view of only looking at your own organization, because we're working for the benefit of all agencies in, in respective countries. Now yet, it happens so that we're all the, the national mapping agencies, but in this group is also also consists of, of, of representatives from the, the respective ministries because each country has a ministry that is responsible for the implementation, and in each country that ministry has uh, appointed a, a national contact point that do the more kind of operational work. It appears then that the group becomes quite big, but we are like only two or three, maybe four from each country, so the group becomes quite small, which means that we have all opportunities to to actually discuss these uh, different questions related to implementation of INSPIRE. Mm. And here you also see the, the, the five Scandinavian countries, Iceland and Norway, that are outside uh, EU, but have adopted the INSPIRE directive, uh, Sweden, Denmark and Finland. What differs a little bit from Iceland and Norway is that they follow a, a different time plan. If I go back to the shared experience again, 
as an implementing agency or, or, or an inspired, nationally inspired coordinator, you're facing some few, but sometimes very big problems. When I was a kid, if I had a problem, I turned to my mother. Uh, but today, as a nationally inspired coordinator, who am I going to turn to? I mean, I have an urgent matter, I can't call the police, I, I have to call someone. And if I have a problem, I call one of my neighboring countries. Either I make an actual phone call or, or I send an email, but in particular, we have this Inspire, Nordic Inspire Network, where we discuss these things. Uh, how do I do this? How can I do this? Do you have any experience on how to carry out these things? So this group is a major forum. That's our forum in the Scandinavian countries or Nordic countries for the implementation, to discuss implementation issues when it comes to INSPIRE. And uh, maybe come back to this one, but you can tell that this has been very, very useful. Yeah, most of you who know INSPIRE know that they're coming from, partly there's a lot of pages, sometimes very difficult documents to go through. Uh, sometimes you have documents from the commissions that you have to uh, discuss, review, and come with comments on. Uh, and it's not always the case that you just read it and then you know exactly what you want, how you want to answer on, on those questions. You have to kind of, you need to have a, a, someone to backstop your ideas with. And in this Nordic network, we, we have that opportunity. This is more our internal work, how we as uh, national coordinators work. But we also have this sharing knowledge. Now from the beginning, uh, I had a different title on this one, sharing resources, and it fitted the picture much better. But we actually don't share resources, but we sh share knowledge about who is doing what. Uh, this has been particularly good because we don't have that many resources in all countries, especially when it comes to these thematic working groups, different types of thematic working groups or drafting teams. We would like to send representatives to all these drafting teams or working groups, but we cannot. We are not that many. It's simple. So what we do then, we share knowledge about who from which countries dealing with what in uh, participating in what group. Which means that we can say, I have some good example for, for elevation model and auto imagery, where we could, we know that Finland had representatives in this working group, so we said, okay, we can't find anyone, but we are sure that Finland, who is facing the same having the same environment, having the same ideas, even using the same equipment, basically, as we do in Sweden. Uh, they have representatives there, so we can trust that, that we will have our view on these specifications uh, taken care of about in these working groups. So that's part of the sharing knowledge. Another example of sharing knowledge is that when we know who is doing what, we have uh, the opportunity, and we have used it from some few times also, that we have an issue that we can't solve because we don't really have the expertise within our own country. But we know that these expertise are within a neighboring country. Through the network, we can get in contact with these experts and through web meetings, telephone meetings, emails, or, and even sometimes physical meetings, we can, we are given help to solve a problem like this. Documents, of course, we, we, we share whatever document we find be of interest to other countries. Sometimes more and sometimes we may actually forget to share, but the intention is good. 
guidelines, proposal, reports, and that, that lately there has been a lot of, of uh, sharing of um, both guidelines, uh, but also when it comes to, to open data, for instance. Networks, who knows about this? I mentioned it already with the experts that we can get uh, help from, but we also get access to each other's network. Uh, in my case, I get quite often questions from my authorities that I'm supposed to support. If I have contact names to uh, corresponding authority in the neighboring countries, and then I can, through my network, and this uh, inspire Nordic, uh, inspire Norden, get those names, get hold of those names, and relate back to this uh, person who asked. No, I said we share the same values. We have more or less the same culture. Uh, and ideas living in the same environment more or less so it may look that we are the same but if you go deeper into this one we are not exactly the same and that's part of the beauty of this one for an outside viewer we may all look like black and white stripes but if you go deeper into the patterns are different now you have to correct me my <laughs> dear colleagues but <laughs> If I just mention a couple of examples, Finland has been working hard with the IT infrastructure, for instance. Um, Denmark is very deep into open data and Inspire is very uh, closely linked to e-governance, as you have heard this morning. Norway has been doing, doing and working with the uh, infrastructure and, and standardization since 18, 18, sorry, not 18. 1986 or 1984, could say, when the SOS work starts, the, the Norwegian standardization. So there are differences. Uh, in, in Sweden and, and Finland, the, the nautical mapping is not within the National Mapping Agency. In, in Denmark and Norway it is, which brings different perspectives. Uh, other difference, uh, You could say if you compare with Iceland, I don't know if someone from Iceland is here, but if you look at Finland, who has in their Inspire implementation engaged all their 390 municipalities, you have on the other hand Iceland, where if I, I'm not completely mistaken now, if a municipality has less than four inhabitants, it has to merge with a neighboring municipality. So municipality with four inhabitants, yeah, it brings some different perspectives into our discussions. So we are sometimes taking slightly different approaches. But this also brings us uh, to, or in our discussion, that enriches our discussions because being so similar yet so different makes Whatever we discuss, we have the, sometimes we get to different viewpoints, and if we merge these different viewpoints or perspectives, we, we think that we have reached quite good decisions or, or, or strategic plans for how to implement, and we can learn a lot from each other based on that one. How does it work? Uh, yeah, we have uh, meetings twice a year. As I said, what happens here, because it's not a formal network, it's, uh, we don't have anyone who has told us to meet twice a year. It's, it's the decision of ourselves. Now, we can't just go around, traveling around the Scandinavian countries without the consent of, of our bus, bosses. But basically, we've been given uh, free hands by our bosses uh, from the director generals of the, the mapping agencies and the ministries, yeah, they sort that out themselves. <laughs> so, uh, which means we are not steered by anyone. 
we meet because it's demand driven. We meet because we, we have realized that we need to, to meet each other sometimes. And what happens, this one was meant to illustrate that these meetings, they rotate among the countries. We go from one country to the next country to the next country. And what happens is that the hosting country, some weeks before we have a meeting, because we agree on the meeting, next meeting we agree on the meeting at the previous meeting, so, so we already know the, when the next meeting is. Uh, they send out an agenda. That agenda will be filled in by everyone, all other countries, and then the hosting countries make some kind of compilation of this one and see what is hot at the moment. What topics are the most of most interest to solve? That can be because there is something coming up from the commission side. We have reached uh, a deadline or something that we have to, to make sure that we are all compliant to that deadline, or there it is. So that, uh, those things will end up on this topic. The hosting country will also usually prepare all the groundwork. Maybe invite extra experts from other organizations to clarify these things. Uh, the hosting countries is then also making minutes from these meetings. We see what we have decided, because sometimes we actually decide some uh, few things also. Uh, and once the meetings are approved by our countries, the, the, the baton or, or, or the stuff at the pin, the, uh, the task moves over to the next country. Mm. Oh. <laughs> working groups. I will not mention too much about working groups, but uh, or work groups or, or small projects that we initiate. But last year, for those who went to the, to the Inspire conference, you could see we had something called the Nordic Data Sharing Project. That was that project originated in this Inspire network because in our discussion we realized that we would like to see how far we have come with Inspire. We would see what are the, the barriers still to be solved. Why don't we make something together? And the result became the Nordic, uh, this, uh, Nordic data sharing project that uh, was presented last year at the, the Inspire conference in Florence. Another project is the development of our portals that I think will be presented a little bit more in detail later on, where we share, actually share resources. Uh, I could probably go on, on smaller joint projects, but I will not do that now. Because I saw I had only five, four minutes left. <laughs> uh, how do we make a, a cooperation or a network like this work, apart from its demand driven? It's the telephone, actually. Communication. The telephone stands for communication in this case. You need to have regular contacts. But the, the thing is, it must not be forced. It's not forced among us. I mean, uh, we find this very useful, and over the years we have also learned to know each other in a way so we can easily call each other. So if you would like to build an informal network like this, you need actually to, to, to put some effort into learning to know each other in, in a way where you can discuss things without prestige. I mean, you must be able to throw out anything, how stupid it is, otherwise it will not work. And if you, if you reach that stage where you trust each other and they will not laugh at you when you say something wrong or stupid or forgotten that it's Monday today, uh, then you're in a good way. We have this meeting twice a year, but we always take the opportunity in, in conferences like this or whenever we meet, we take the opportunity to just have a chat. It could be over a coffee or just stay for five minutes when you meet at the entrance, but always take the opportunity to, to discuss and see how is family and whatever. That, that breeds trust. Uh, telephone meeting, we are planning actually to expand this one and, and also uh, have more regular web meetings. We haven't come that far, but we, we hope that will come this. And we have a common platform where we share documents. It's not like we're emailing all our guidelines to each other. It's we have one website where we all can upload documents, and that website in turn 
sends more emails to us saying that now Denmark has uploaded a guidance document and then we can go and have a look at it. Uh, benefits of this cooperation, yeah, the first point I don't think I have to mention because it's valid in all, all areas of life. We are stronger together. And when I say stronger together, two heads are not one plus one. Uh, two heads are when, when one plus one becomes three. We have substantially broadened our knowledge base thanks to our combined networks where we have, we know and have access to experts and knowledge that are not available within our own countries. And that in turn provides less work for us. So if it's demand driven in the sense that we need to know what we are doing, uh, what the other are doing and need to learn from each other, it's also demand driven in the sense that we don't have all these resources, we don't have this time to spend on the implementation as we might like, even if we love this work. And in the long run, yes, we think is we have a better and smoother implementation of INSPIRE and, and also that we think that we are in a better way harmonizing the implementation in between the countries. Search that we will have, if, if we don't manage to, to, well, we have to satisfy European Union, of course, but first hand we have to satisfy our own needs and, and our own regional needs. And that was short, but my time ran out. I'm happy I spoke so long. But um, I want to give the floor to the next speaker. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much, Anders. And uh, we move on to even more cooperation, to so some data. Cooperation. Are there any questions uh, on clarification for Anders? Then please raise your hands. Otherwise, we'll have, I hope, again, oh, the, the, the floor is filling up. How happy? I'm happy. Just a second and I will. Uh, you're there. Okay. Thank you. Okay, my presentation will give you some examples of the Nordic cooperation in the environmental domain. It is kind of a complementary to this uh, Inspire Nordic network that is existing. And the background to this is that uh, cooperation has taken place in many fields for a long, long time much before for, um, we had this INSPIRE directive. And uh, in most fields and domains, the use of space, spatial data has increased. And uh, also a need for, for harmonized data and a common data infrastructure had emerged. So when we got this INSPIRE directive, we were really happy to get a com uh, uh, cross thematic framework for for things that we already saw that had to be done and um, since the topic was same same but different I would like to highlight some differences first I don't really want you to remember these these are just uh, like Anders said it just makes the discussion more fruitful because we are different and we have different situations in data policy in our countries, meaning sharing of data is not always easy. But as we have, with time, it has also changed in many Nordic countries and it's getting easier and easier. And uh, also when working really with geospatial spatial data and harmonizing it, you get this uh, discussions on, on the perceptions of what is a what is a class and what is a feature really. And it's, it has been a fruitful, really good discussion on these issues for years. 
and we also operate in different scales and different data. We need to harmonize on the borders, but how can we cope that in Finland we have a data in an exact scale and in, 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 in Sweden they have a coarser scale in, 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 in for, a, for a example. So, and difference in, in projections and coordinate systems has also um, made the, make the, made the word work challenging, but uh, somehow it's, it's easier now with the, the ETRS 89. Let's first go to the cooperation with um, related to water. It's natural that we are interested in cooperation since we cooperation thing on water issues since we have a transboundary river basin and um, in order to have a successful water management system, like it was said in the plenary, the, the river doesn't stop at the border. You actually need to, to cover all the transboundary river basins in order to be successful. And also we are similar so that we fa face similar challenges that need to be, or it's uh, fruitful to solve them together. And in addition to this, we have the INSPIRE and the Water Framework Directive that says that river basins, catchment areas, and river and lakes between neighbor, neighboring countries actually have to be harmonized. So we have a kind of a political framework for, for our work. There is a, an existing cooperation between the hydrological, hydrological institutes in the Nordic countries called CHIN Network. And uh, from 2004 onwards, there has been this CHIN GIS team working with GIS issues. And these three points are now taken from the, their program. So they Goals are to share knowledge and best practices to improve water-related data and data management systems, to harmonize the data, and when possible, if we are of the same opinion, give a common view on the implementation of on European initiatives. Here's a picture of, of us standing on the roof of my institute, <laughs> the Finnish Environment Institute, this spring. And here you can also see the names of the institutes participating. So then I would go through some major achievements of this CHIN GIS network. A common river basin district data set has been produced for all as a, uh, as a cooperation between Syke from Finland, the, the Norwegian Institute and SMHI from Sweden. That's a, well, great, it's done. <laughs> and the work uh, harmonizing water data sets in transboundary areas is an ongoing. And the principles has been agreed upon. And also a common code for the transboundary sp spatial objects have been included. And we have com come to an agreement on the definitions of the lakes and rivers in the transboundary areas, how to do it. And how to, in practice, do the harmonization work. We had had Swedish people <coughs> sitting in Syke. So we, it has, even if it hasn't been easy to share the da data, but we have always found ways um, to, to work on this. And uh, well, just to, to point out that you need to make compromises, you need to make changes in, in your national systems in order to reach re real harmonization. And it's not, it takes time because some of the coding systems may have, may have been in use for a long time. But this is real, real life situation. This was before, before harmonization in the, on the 
Finnish Swedish border and this is one area that actually is now completed unfortunately I don't have the corresponding picture of <laughs> how it was solved but now that we have the same center lines and same river polygons and same catchment boundaries and then some a few examples from my colleague in in Sweden what is going on there they are improving their data, SVAR data, using Norwegian data. So they are actually borrowing data from Norway, from um, data that, that cross the border. So they have, have access to that now and have been able to, to do real harmonization work. And this work will continue in a project called Good Hydrography together with the Swedish land survey. And exam examples of what has been going on in Norway. There's a lot, a lot of catchments, common catchments <laughs> along the whole border, but they have started working with these, these ones. And here you can see examples of the different scales that we work with. Example of, of practical work. And in addition to, to this practical harmonization work, the group also exchange ideas and applications. For example, uh, Sweden used a Finnish software, Finges, in the 90s before we had ArcView and ArcGIS, so we have a long tradition of sharing software. And just recently, uh, Iceland has made changes to the Nordri Norwegian web mapping, mapping application so that it's now used for in Iceland. So they, they have the same, same structure and Iceland was happy to, to use that. Mm -hmm. And also as a process of exchanging a, ideas, some, some same solutions have emerged, in, uh, like the tool for delineation of catchment areas that is now, we have kind of the same solution in, in Norway and Finland. And then there are also discussions on how to improve interoperability between hydrographical coding systems. So they have just been solved in the tra transnational areas, but not, not elsewhere. And to bring forward some real <laughs> inspire issues to be this, that has been discussed, and then they have discussed how to, uh, we have discussed how to implement the Hydra ID and the Inspire ID, and how to be prepared for the hydrography model. And um, not, and it has several times been brought forward that the people in in, in this Chin GIS uh, network really don't have the time to go into the all specifications and guidelines. So uh, having a, for instance, an Inspire compliant geodatabase will be really helpful to get started. And I'm sure when we have some practical data transformation examples from one country, we will share them with another. That's something we will do in the near future. Yeah. And of course, to remember that what we actually need to harmonize our data. Uh, I'll move forward to the next example. There is also a network that cooperate related to the water framework directive. They are kind of two separate networks, these two. They have a discussion, email network, and then they organize conferences and workshops. The picture is from the last workshop in, in Oulu, Finland, where also people from Scotland and Ireland participated. And they kind of, they always have uh, 
data issues on their agenda and they build upon the work upon that has been done in a GIS network. So they cooperate, these two networks cooperate a lot. One achievement is that uh, web map services on the actual ecological status of the waters have been done for Finland, Norway and Sweden. We have agreed on the layer symbology, which might feel that it's easy, but uh, this, it's, they are processes. And then we now have published VMS and REST services that we can share and use in our applica own applications. We have uh, found that actually the REST services are faster, so that those have been found more, more useful. And I'll just give you examples of of the web mapping um, applications that are in the respective countries and how actually in all you now can see the, this ecological status map. The, uh, the base map data is unfortunately only available for the country that, um, whose service it is. So this is now the Finnish service where you can perhaps see the base map, I'm not sure, a bit light. And uh, coming to a third example of this cooperation, we use, we are trying to be creative, <laughs> so we use exchange programs. For instance, the, there's one related to water called the Water S program, mm -hmm. making it possible for, for exchange between institutes or university and uh, private companies or, or vice versa. And for example, uh, methods developed at SUKE for, for water, water framework, coastal water bodies is now implemented for Sweden at the Brookman company. So there are ways to cooperate. My fourth and last example comes from land cover. Um, Korean land cover data sets have been produced in the Nordic countries since year 2000 and the institutes responsible in respective countries have met several times to discuss issues. The last two meetings, uh, one was in, in, fi in Finland in Helsinki 2012 and one in Tromsø 2013 and hopefully we can um, have another this year. That's the plan. A common finding is that the uh, nomenclature used is partly unsuitable for the northern land landscape. And some actions have been taken to harmonize the perception. Here we come again to the classification. What, what do you in Norway see is, is this class? And well, in Sweden, you might have another perception, even if we have the, the same guidelines for making Korean land cover. And to some extent, the Nordic countries share the same ideas on how to use national data in the production of, of Korean land cover. And these have been brought forward in, in projects like HELM and in, net, in the Eagle network. And uh, coming to Inspire, the land cover specification actually allows the use of different nomenclatures so, meaning that it's easy to implement, but it doesn't really support harmonization. So, we have decided to, to go, go this another way to get really true, true harmonization on the borders. Because the Inspire says that we have to harmonize on the border. But how can we harmonize if we don't look at the classification and, and come to agreements on, on what is what? An example is uh, shown on this map. Unfortunately, the coloring are, is not so good, but the green area, as you can see, you have, there are more moors and heathlands a lot in Sweden and Finland. Not in, in Norway, that um, is where there's a lot of blue areas, sparsely vegetated blue areas. But these are both, both interpretations are correct, but it makes that, the result is that you can really see where the border is when, if you look at the Korean data from, from, 
on European level. And we would like to yeah, change that. And the thing is that both are correct. It's also the situation if we, we see a forest, a closely related forestly classes like mixed forest and uh, coniferous forest. We have different interpretations what they are. So um, at the latest meetings we made some agreements to dim diminish these differences at the border areas and then we have set some common long-term goals to, that we will like to have common approach for the land cover types and more exact thresholds and perhaps we can suggest some some additional classes for for Korean land cover <coughs> and on the, in the same time we could take into the data needs of the habitat directives and so on the Kyoto reporting obligations that so that we can use this data in a better way now you're probably interested in how how can we <laughs> How can we find the time and resources? Well, it's challenging. It is. One annual meet, two day meeting is secured for, for the Chin GIS network. So it's in the same way as in the Nordic Inspire network that, well, this year it, might, it was Finland organizing the next, it's probably Iceland. And so they take turns in organizing it. Budget resources are used for harmonization work, and of course, if there are some projects going on, that's the resources that are used. For the Water Framework Directive cooperation, workshops and conferences have been partly financed by the Nordic Councils of Ministers, that is a regional body for all the Nordic countries, but in addition, budget resources have been needed to cover all the time for, for preparing the meetings. And as I mentioned, different exchange programs, there, there are a lot. And related to Korean land cover, we have used both budget resources and Korean land co cover project resources. And trying to be the, very creative and meet meet uh, if, if there's a pr uh, pr uh, project going on in Europe then we have tried to meet there and uh, this is my final slide just to to inspire you to to start cross-border cooperation or in in the to implement inspire there are a lot of regional bodies available and they might have funding mechanisms for, for workshop and meetings. Even they might even have funding for, for work. So thank you. Thank you Lena for, for giving us a lot of examples on how to harmonize together. And uh, Jani? Are you ready for the next tour the open data cooperation? Any questions on clarification for Lena? And you can say, where's all the fun? Then we come to that. <laughs> okay, hit the road, Jenny. Thank you, Ulla. So Welcome, my Nordic and European colleagues. I'm happy to see you in such a great number in this room today. And um, my name is Jani Kulmaho. I work at the National Land Survey of Finland, and together with Mr. Jari Reini, sitting in the front row, um, at the SDI unit, basically. Doing things with the Finnish SDI and the Inspire implementation in Finland. Uh, despite this very fancy t-shirt, I'm not here to talk about the Oscari platform today, but um, if you are interested in that, then Mr. Timo Arnio, sitting over there, will give a presentation on that on Friday at 10 o'clock. However, now I'm going to touch on the 
issue of Nordic cooperation. I'm going to walk you through how we do cooperation in the Nordic countries among open source software development. So basically all this began in, back in 2010 when the director generals of the Nordic mapping agencies met and uh, had a discussion on how could we work more closely between the Nordic national mapping agencies in a, in a practical level. So they, the managers decided that open source would be a, a good starting point for a concrete cooperation between the countries. And um, what the directors emphasized was that we actually need concrete results. So we have a lot of uh, uh, discussion groups between the countries, and I have to say that I don't want to undermine the importance of discussion and networking and collaboration on, in that level, but we also need to go into the practical work and actually do things together that produce concrete results like, like software that we can use together. So we then went about um, started the first cooperation among the national metadata catalogs. So all the participating countries had, had already the plan to use GeoNetwork as their metadata catalog solution. And this was a good starting point for cooperation as we are, are all under the INSPIRE obligation to deliver a CSW interface which is compliant to the INSPIRE regulations. So therefore, we started the cooperation in this field. And also I'd like to mention that the Dutch cadaster, as well as our Scottish friends, uh, were working closely with the Nordic countries on this geonetwork development and testing. And well, here are the results, basically. So in a couple of years' time, we had all our uh, metadata catalogs run up and running uh, using the same software that we had developed together. And this is to point out that even if we develop software together, uh, Inspire compliant CSW interface API, it doesn't mean that our software or portals have to look the same. They are based on the same software, but still we have different GUIs and different implementations for the end users. So there is still the vari variety of, of, of different cult cultures can also be seen for in these applications. And so what do you really need uh, in order to be successful in this kind of cooperation? So these are, many of these things have already been mentioned by, for instance, in Anders' speech. But I want to begin with trust. So we need mutual trust. And it begins by having trust between people. So people who work for these organizations, they have to meet and they have to, have to trust each other, get to know each other. And then we can agree that we can work on towards a common goal. And that trust between people generates trust between organizations as well. And that, on saying that, we need also need to be committed to, to what we are doing. Once we agree on our plans, we need to commit to them and, and act upon the plans as agreed. Otherwise, we will lose the trust that we have created in each other. Also, we need a positive attitude. So it, it's, not, it's not good to um, get stuck with small details or problems, but we have to look forward and always find, find solutions to the problems, be solution-oriented. That's a really important point. Also, we have to be able to reach consensus on things. So we cannot stick only to our own agendas. We have to compromise. We have to find common solutions and common ways of seeing things, even if it means that we have to compromise a little bit on our own agendas. And last but not least, we need openness. So sharing of information, like Anders pointed out, is that means that when we put all the information we have together, it sums up to a greater amount of information than the original pieces of information were. And when we need to do something similar, like solve the problem of, of creating an Inspire compliant CSW interface, we can do it together. So doing it together means that we can share the results together, but also it means that, means that we, can, we can share the results to all the, the whole community. 
it doesn't cost any extra to share the results even further to the, to the, to the other uh, national agencies who need to implement Inspire. So actually with the Geo Network case, it is all open source software and all the, uh, all the modifications that we have put into the software are usable by, by the whole Geo Network committee and thus able for enable other countries to take benefit from the developments that have been made to forward Inspire implementation in the Nordic countries. And then uh, I'd like to touch on a few points on why we think open source is, is a good idea. So for the first thing that, that most people think about when they hear open source is that it's free, free of charge. That is that's mostly true, but I don't think that is the, the most important point within open source or using or in favor of using open source. I think the most important is that you are able to freely modify, maintain, and, and further develop the software that you are, have chosen for your services. And you are not locked in with a certain vendor that you bought the software from or, or the one who has developed the software, but you can take the code and go to another vendor and ask for modifications to be made. And this also facilitates sharing of results between participating countries and part participating administ uh, or agencies and also makes the collaborative development possible between agencies and countries. And usually it open source software can, can be fixed more quickly and improvements can be made more swiftly than to proprietary software as well as especially in if the community of the open source software is, is alive and, and vivid. On the concern side, you have to be careful when you choose your, your pro projects to, be, to go with. So you know, it needs to be mature enough for your purposes. So that is not something that's going to be um, not going to be developed after a couple of years time or it's based on a technology that's obsolete. So you have to, have to be careful when picking up the good, good berries from the field of software. And also you have to consider the broadness of the user and developer community for the software that you are using. Is it wide enough to support the further development of the software? And also regarding your IT architecture, you need to consider whether it's suitable for, for your own environment because sometimes software comes with dependencies that might not fit to your architecture. So be careful with that. And also, one of the, one of the key pitfalls that you might fall into is, is isolating your software branch. So if you do some development on your open source software installation, which you do not push back to the original project, you will li most likely end up in a situation where you would like to update a new version of your software from the original branch and it's not compatible with your changes that you have made yourself. So therefore, I strongly encourage you to also share the results of your developments to the original open source community. And then uh, moving on to how we actually then work together between the Nordic countries on this open source software. So we have this nosing group um, of people it's one, one to two people ma mainly from, from each country. And um, we prepare a plan of activities uh, within the group, which is then presented to the man director generals of mapping agencies. And it, it is the director generals who will commit themselves to this agenda. And that is important because they are the only people who can actually provide us with resources of do, for doing things. So therefore, we need the commitment of the management. And of course, we will report to the management each year on our results and findings. Then the coordination of work. Uh, there is a coordinator for the work appointed each year. Um, as of this year, we will have a two-year period for the coordination. And the coordinator is responsible for, for, for making sure that we have regular telecoms, web meetings, and the reporting gets done, the planning gets done, and that we at least have one face-to-face -face meeting per year. 
So this is not to say that the coordinator has to arrange this all, but he has to make sure that this is happening. And then the actual work is done in subgroups. So when there is a core operation topic that we have identified, then we gather the experts from respective countries who want to participate um, in, in the subgroup. And the, these groups will have a person who is leading the activity. And these groups can um, arrange their work as they see fit, uh, as long as they report on the progress to the other to the whole group on a regular basis. And of course we have a wiki to wiki spaces for, for maintaining um, common documents. And funding of course is quite an interesting. How, how, could we, how, how can we fund things? Of course, when we work just um, between the agencies, the people from the agencies, then it's in kind so we don't send bills to each other for work that we do. However, if we need to purchase work from companies, then then we must, in, in the NOSIN group, agree uh, w which organization buy, buys <laughs> what work. So the National Alliance of Finland could, for instance, buy something related to, to the CSW interface, uh, internet network, or the Danish agency could buy something that's related to the, to the open search functionality in your network, etc. So we can agree to share the work on basis of uh, some items, or then just basically saying that, okay, the Finnish National Land Survey buys uh, 16 hours of work, and the Swedish Land Material buys another 60 hours of work. But each organization has to make their own purchase agreement, because otherwise we would end up in problems with, with, with some uh, procurement uh, rules that we need to everyone needs to take care of that they are making procurements as per the law um, then currently we are working in at least five subgroups we are still working on GIA network develop developments as well as metadata editor uh, improvements uh, we have been looking into different options for inspire validation um, one interesting topic is authentication and authorization. We have set up a Nordic Federation, test federation, which we are looking to expand further, uh, testing, testing and more services connected to that. And also we have been testing geoportals, especially regarding download service clients of the WFS client software. For instance, we've been investigating whether the Oscar software would be suitable for use in in other Nordic countries. And also, additionally, we are working together on, on international projects such as the ELF and the Arctic SDI. And some experiences. Um, of course, it's not always easy to stick to the ideal way of, way of working. So you have, of course, other duties than, than cooperating with your neighboring countries. But that has to be the goal. You have to be clear that this is what we want to do and this is how we want to do it. And, uh, and we, we can be better at achieving our goals all the time. And sure, surely the working together, it facilitates mutual understanding and knowledge exchange, which is very important, like Anders pointed out. But even more importantly, when we align our country's need on a specific work item, and we develop things together that really saves us time and money. And that's important in the under the current economic situation. And not to forget that it's also a good fun to work together. So we, of course, it's, it's really lovely to work with professional and very nice colleagues from, from many other countries. And um, some ideas about what next steps we might take in the Nordic collaboration. So we are going to already test within the ELF project how we can actually together do shared development. So we are going to build the SLD auditor component for the ELF Oscar platform in cooperation together with National Land Survey and Land Materiate. And we are going to use the most modern uh, shared 
development tools like the GitHub, where we can share the code, and then each each organization developers can push their modifications into the shared code repository, and thus making it possible to to develop the same application at the same time in two different countries. And also the other partners are, of course, following on our, our development and supporting it by testing, for instance, the software. And to facilitate this kind of development, we need an instant messaging solution between the countries. It's, it's not enough anymore to send emails or put something on the wiki page when you are doing actual development and you'd have to ask, how, is, how are you gonna do this, write this method, or how, how can I send this request to your part of the software? So it has to be very instant kind of messaging. I mean, you think about what kind of tools we can use for this across the borders. And uh, last but not least, then it, it would be interesting to look into how could we arrange uh, bid procedures and purchase agreements if we want to purchase from work from a company um, together um, cross-border for cross-border work. And maybe some best practices are going to be, I, I hear that are going to be developed in the EULF project for this, this kind of cases. So that's just about what I had to say to you. Thank you very much for listening. Tangled here. So, this was a tour de force through some of the cooperation that we're doing in, in the Nordic countries, and, and thank you all three of you. Now I'm sure you have some questions for these guys, and what will happen now is we need to speak from this place here because we are filmed. We all signed and agreed upon it. So. Please pose a question, and uh, whoever can answer it best uh, will do so. And knowing that this needs an icebreaker, I have prepared a question. <laughs> <laughs> I have prepared a question. So Anders, please take the stand. Now that Inspire is uh, at a crossroads that we're going to hear more about tomorrow, we have used the networks a lot to prepare in front of the committee meetings, uh, making use of it to, to legislate uh, in the legislation process. What now? What now that the legislation is in place? How can we use the network onwards? The role, the role and task of the Inspire, the Nordic Inspire Network, I think, would be. Uh, how can I express this? Uh, we are still in the beginning. We, we still do, need, we need to do all the harmonizations, for instance. That's one part. Uh, at least, if we, in my opinion, my view on those areas I work more, more frequently in is, is to see what, what data sets are made available and from whom. And for me, it's not enough just to, to to uh, deliver or, or bring up some basic data sets. I would like to see quite an extensive list of data sets that are harmonized over at least the, the, the Scandinavian, the Nordic countries. Because we are, we do have data sets that are of importance for us. And that may not be so important for other countries in, in Europe and further south. And we usually we joke and, and talk about our reindeers that we have in all countries. I think we are the only countries that really have reindeers to take care of, which means reindeers will be forgotten by the rest of Europe. So we have to make sure we have coverage all over uh, the, the region. Another area that worries me a little bit is how to make Inspire the way of deliver data or provide data for the users. And there I think we have a lot to learn and to work together towards because we need, we can't, we can't see Inspire as, as something we do just because the European Union won't Inspire. We need to, to embrace Inspire and make it the way 
we build our infrastructure on, as a big core. And that's reflected in most of the specifications and back to specifications and data sets again. But they are just core, but they can all be extended and adjusted to fit a particular purpose. And, and then there I think we have a lot of work to do and discuss, just like Lina said and Jani said as well, but especially what Jani said. We have to agree. What do we need? What are common, common uh, least denominator, so to say, for an, a Nordic inspired infrastructure? I think Anders, did that spur on? Did that spur? Did that spur, did that spur? Did that spur on some uh, questions? Yes. Eric Okia from Belgium. I have a question for uh, Jerry. Okay. Um, the question is about Geo Network. I think uh, this product is uh, used uh, in a lot of places in Europe uh, for the for implementing the discovery. Um, the catalog service. Uh, do you know if it exists a, a, a network of geo network developers? Uh, not that there is a community, but is there a specific community for uh, the Inspire within the Inspire uh, group and uh, how it is accessible? Well, we have um, met together with um, other geo network uh, users. Uh, last the last meeting was, I think, in the last year or beginning of this year, and um, I'm sure that um, I think Michael Östling from Landsmaterialet was participating in this meeting on behalf of the Nordic countries. And so you could, um, if you can catch Michael somewhere, he would be able to tell what are the latest news on this cooperation. Just keep it open because we have someone just behind you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Shail uh, Kovacic from Croatia. Well, I want to come back to the fun issue. So, Lena, if I remembered well, uh, said that there is an issue in Nordic countries even discussing the terms lake and river. Then you can me imagine that the Nordic and we from the south, we have some problems with the word fun for example. So if I understood correctly, the definition of the fun is as much, as more work there is together, there is more fun. Because in the South, we do not really think so. Okay. Yeah. But uh, uh, the question, the real question is, we heard um, there are different models how you agree what you will do together because I don't think that you do everything together. So there is a there is an example that it was uh, so to say given by the decision of the directors to be done some things and some things are coming from the various uh, working groups so to say proposals, annual proposals, what are the next activities, so to say. So is there a model how to define what will be done together? Or this is, so to say, from occasion and from situation to situation? Mm -hmm. They have the, uh, uh, we have a working program that states that we have to focus on particular tasks, but then it's up to to the, the to the, us sitting in the team deciding what to focus on and of course we report up to the to the chin just and if they have a possibility to to take issues down but it's uh, quite up to the network and i guess we have a that kind of sense of humor that uh, you know <laughs> That's our sense of humor too. It's nice to be able to discuss. We see a problem that nobody else realizes actually is a problem, but uh, you know, 
<laughs> it's a queer sense of humor. Yeah. So and also related to the land cover monitoring, it's not uh, it's not a problem for for AAA EEA that we have these um, differences on the border because they are neighboring classes. But for us, it's a problem for us, and then we want to do something about it when we have a Korean project going on and we f see well. Let's now, this time, do it when doing Karin, try to uh, to harmonize, do it a little bit better. So it's 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 actually on a really technical level. What can we do? What kind of new data do we have in this Karin round that we didn't have in the last round? Mm. Yeah, did this answer your question? <laughs> Good, and we have. Cool. Yeah, hello. Uh, it's it's uh, Arvid Lilton from Norway here. Uh, I've been so f fortunate that I've been able to uh, participate in this network, and uh, and uh, there we, we yeah learn a lot and, and see different very good examples of, of different things. And and one thing I would uh, like to highlight is um, Anders. Uh, he has made some fantastic illustrations or or on uh, on the data models. Very simple because we get uh, hundreds and thousands of pages of, of data specifications and he has made them into uh, one page per theme. Uh, so this is not only something that we are using in Norway, but uh, this should get a broader audience. So I would uh, li like if you could uh, just talk a little bit more about uh, these fantastic illustrations. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, what Aaron is talking about is actually the specifications. There are 34 Inspire themes. Each theme is described in, uh, not that much in the implementing rule, but in the technical guidance. I mean, you have, may have 400 pages, uh, and you have UML models and things like that. And for, for someone who just want to know a little bit of what would the team, geology or hydrography or human health actually contain? What kind of data would that one encompass? So what I did was actually trying to ma map this one according to some kind of like a logical framework where I did a, a tree. A tree. If I have one theme, human health, and if you read this one, then I can follow like arrows. So human health, okay, that can be split into health statistics, health determinants, then, and, and so on. And that can be put in small boxes with arrows that you can follow, like a flow chart. And then each of these health statistics or health determinants can then be, okay, what could health statistics be? Without having to read all these 400 pages, you can follow this arrow and say, ah, oh, okay, that could be split into these subtypes. And then you can go on like this as far as you want, of course, all the way down to object level, but I have stopped a little bit on, on, a, on a higher level. This one I find useful. Thank you, Arvid. <laughs> I find it also useful. Uh, they are available actually at, at uh, our homepage, geodata.se. I don't have the address easily written. Uh, do you have internet on that one? Ah, yes, www.geodata.se. There you may find them if they are a bit down in the hierarchy, but they are there. Otherwise, you send me a mail and I give you the direct link. Uh, if you're interested in, in, in going deeper into the, the scope of Inspire, no, there's not the scope of Inspire, we know the scope of Inspire, the scope of the data specifications or, or, or the, the interoperability of data sets. Then, and then I recommend that one to have a look because it helps you in the thinking. It doesn't explain anything. It, for, for, for a developer who wants to see the UML model, these ones are not 
the one you're looking for. These ones are for laymen's who want to know what's in the scope of these particular specifications, easily written like a list, dotted list. But they were very fun to do. <laughs> oh, that's good. Thank, Thank you, Anders. <laughs> Any more? Anything more you would like to know? Why are you thinking, oh, good, Peter? Is it on? Thank you. Is it on? Yes. My name is Peter Publier. I'm from the Danish Geodata Agency. I work uh, with the Arctic Spatial Data Infrastructure. And I think listening to you and your presentations on, on how you, you have built the cooperation within the Inspire community uh, among the Nordic countries, I think we have learned we have learned the lesson when we cooperate in the Arctic together with Canada, Russia, and uh, and the U.S. So we actually try to copy this, and and because the cooperation is a voluntary cooperation, and we need to put in voluntary uh, resources, and the only way to do that is to sort of try to try to split. Uh, uh, all the tasks between us and, and, and do it, uh, one take the lead on one issue, another country take the lead on another issue. And one thing I have noticed, not being part of the Danish or the Nordic Inspire uh, cooperation, I have noticed that the Nordic countries are very good at trusting each other uh, in, in taking on, upon themselves responsibilities um, and do the job. So in the Arctic cooperation we really we, we have good use of, 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 of the Nordic uh, cooperation, and I can only recommend this for, for other issues, like, for instance, a regional uh, European SDI seen in a global context with the UN. Because if you see the UN system, if we go into a UN system, we know it will be very bureaucratic, it will be very heavy, it will be long term. And, and this, I think, doing this like we do it here is much more efficient. Uh, and I hope we will be able to continue the road you have shown us in the Arctic cooperation by, by doing so. Thank you. Yeah. I will come and get it here. Anybody else? So, the fun, I think you touched upon it many times. From my point of view, I find it fun to work with gifted colleagues. I find it fun whenever I have a problem and someone can solve it for me. I find it very funny when I save time and money. And I find it very funny when I see actual results coming out of our work. So you can leave earlier or you can stay. <laughs> no, thank you all. If there's no more questions, thank you for participating and thank you to the presenters. Good job. Good job. Yes. Sure. Yeah. Det virker fint det hele. Det er dejligt. Det er. Lader det til? Ja, det er skønt.